everybody. <clears throat> Don't you love it when you put something down and then you're like, where did I put that? Um, it's the story of my life right now. All right, so we are uh, just a little bit early, and uh, so I will see who is wanting to join for home practice uh, this morning. Um, so take your time getting situated wherever um, you are, maybe clear a little bit of space, remembering to make sure that you have a book, maybe a strap. Uh, block, sorry, I used the block, but some, some folks don't have some equipment. Um, you might also even use a chair or a, a hassock. Hassock, not a hammock. Hammock is not very supportive. Just letting you know. A little bit of yoga wisdom. Ha! Ah, all right, I'm going to give it another minute, and then um, we'll get into our practice. Uh, my practice that I am hoping to be able to share with you all. Yeah. All right, so as you know, we may be joined by uh, any of my four-legged family members. Um, so they give me all of the opportunity to be able to practice everything uh, that I believe in, especially patience, uh, when I'm trying to do something so focused. Um, so good morning, everyone. Uh, so good to be here. Breathing, feeling, being vibrant and healthy and alive. So to whatever degree, we all also are sharing that safe, secure, Healthiness, let's honor that. I've got silence today. I think that most of my practice uh, is going to continue to be silent so that I'm tuning in and letting go of some of that exterior stimulation, that external stimulation, which has really felt uh, very amplified of late. I don't know about you, uh, but that has been my space and I've really had to say this is a quiet time these are quiet times washing dishes in quiet time um, so that is practice so hi I'm Belinda I am uh, the owner and founder of Just Be Yoga a donation based yoga outreach community is uh, what I would like to frame us as not a studio um, we're not a gym we're not uh, not even a place, right? We, we are we are a people. Uh, that's how I feel about uh, anyone I've had the honor of sharing my practice with, and I hope that that is also the way it is uh, being um, shared out out in the world. So the goal of uh, the home yoga practice live is to uh, use this opportunity uh, for many of us who are spending a lot of time at home um, to connect in in. Uh, in an authentic way about our home practice. And so with that, I'm sharing um, all of the limbs of yoga. Uh, it, you know, so that's about the breath. It's about our senses. It's about our focus and our mind. Um, it's about how we treat ourselves and others. So I'm going to start today actually with a reading. Um, I awoke today uh, to some news of a dear friend who lost a second family member um, due to uh, this virus. And uh, the second family member was really young, uh, was 20 years old. And um, realized that, yeah, I mean, I, I've known that this is real, but this is like super, super real. And um, everything is fleeting. So I wanted to ground and feel rooted and I went and one day I'll take you guys to my book library, which is voluminous. <laughs> um, but uh, I went and I just reached in. I do believe in, you know, spirit energy and ancestral energy. And uh, this book 
jumped out at me. And so it's Thich Nhat Hanh, No Death, No Fear, Comforting Wisdom for Life. And I thought, I'm not familiar with this book. I don't remember being gifted this book or purchasing this book. And of course, when I look inside of it, um, this was a book that belonged to our good friend Johnny. Um, John Boland passed away about a year ago, and he was a huge supporter of our of our studio and, and what we do here. And so uh, it's nice to know that John is right here with us uh, still and guiding my practice and being a part of my practice. Um, so the reading that I want to give out of uh, the Thich Nhat Hanh book, it's just a small reading. Impermanence. The practice and understanding of impermanence is not just another description of reality. It is a tool that helps us in our transformation, healing, and emancipation. Impermanence means that everything changes and that nothing remains the same in any consecutive moment. And although things change every moment, they still cannot be accurately described as the same or as different from what they were a moment ago. When we bathe in the river today that we bathed in yesterday, is it the same river? Heraclitus, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, it's a Greek name, Heraclit, Heraclitus, said that we couldn't step into the same river twice. He was right. The water in the river today is completely different from the water we bathed in yesterday. Yet it is the same river. When Confucius was standing on the bank of a river watching it flow by, he said, oh, it flows like that day and night, never ending. The insight of impermanence helps us to go beyond all concepts. It helps us to go beyond same and different and coming and going. It helps us to see that the river is not the same river, but is also not different either. It shows us that the flame we lit on our bedside candle before we went to bed is not the same flame that is burning the next morning. The flame on the table is not two flames, but it is not one flame either. We have all had to embrace impermanence in all kinds of ways. Um, I don't know if I could turn up the volume, Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> but I will get closer to my mic. Um, we've all had to embrace impermanence in all kinds of ways. And, um, you know, as far as our lifestyles changing, um, things that we have become accustomed to. But the reality is, is that things are always changing. And uh, we're always navigating that space and trying to find balance in it. So that impermanence is going to be a part of uh, my mindset as I walk through my practice here today. Another element of practice that I uh, am working on today and tomorrow, last week I introduced ahimsa or nonviolence as well as tapas, discipline and devotion. But today I'm going to introduce this term saucha. And saucha is an element, uh, it's a a part of the second branch of yoga um, and it, it means um, kind of purity or cleanliness. Uh, be sure that I know that we're all being uber focused on like sanitizers and all this exterior bugging but let's take care of our insides as well. Drink lots of water of course uh, but I'm doing uh, you know two meals a day or just liquid right now um, just to kind of keep the system clean and clear and functioning. I think some of us are at home and ingesting a lot of junk and garbage. So um, pay attention to the functioning of your system and give it a rest and clear it out uh, so that it's vibrant. And uh, notice what it does for your mind as well. I'm not going to say what you drink and what you do. Um, just pay attention to what you're putting in your body. And if there is some sort of liquid fasting that you can do, go ahead. If you're neti potting, wonderful. Cleansing your nasal passages. How are you gargling and cleansing your mouth? 
Um, what are we putting in our body and are we paying attention to how we're evacuating? Um, these are important toward the well-being of this vessel, this physical vessel. Um, and, and that's an aspect of our practice. Let's not let asana, the yoga poses, be all of our focus, all right? Uh, yeah, we want to feel it move, but if we're not paying attention to what we put into it, it's not going to give us the health and vibrance that it needs, that we need, and we definitely need our immune system and our whole system to be ready to do battle for whatever may be coming. Um, so saucha, I'm gonna start with a little bit of a cleansing breath. And for me, impermanence is going to be about letting go, not clinging to any idea about my practice today, trying to not even cling to whatever it is I am so-called teaching or sharing. Many of you know I, I've never had any sort of scripting about what a class is going to be, so I'm just focusing on impermanence and what that means for me even letting go of uh, any thoughts of how I can serve my friend or anyone who is suffering from any loss or fear. And feeling that non-clinging inside of myself and even the fight against non-clinging. And using my breath to clear out my body. So let's take a nice deep breath. Out the mouth. Breathe in the nose, feel the hairs in the nostrils cleansing that air. Exhale out the nose. Try to use your nose to breathe and filter your air. Love those nostril hairs because they are capturing any invaders coming in. Maybe stop clipping so much. And we'll breathe in and lengthen up. Exhale, bring it to center. Just gonna spend time breathing in, breathing out, focusing and feeling my breathing being. Feeling this being as a permeating being, a filtrating being. Feeling the impermanence of breath as it comes in and out. I'm going to lengthen my legs out in front of me. I'm going to feel the vibrancy of being alive. Pointing and flexing the feet and the toes. And lifting upright, breath in. Exhale, first time, definitely for me. Ah. And then just let go. Let my mind's eye come into my body. Invite that body wisdom. Relaxing my belly, feeling my organs as I breathe and let that breath kind of pump and move my organs feel myself as an organic being feeling all that has changed how many cells have already died since this practice started breathe in and come back up and lift breath in exhale taking it forward Now I've really felt my body a bit now in my breath and I'm going to allow for myself to kind of check in on my heart. My heart's a little heavy, a little sorrowful, I'm feeling a little like a, you know, the, the, the inability to do much, that futility. And I know that I'm not useless, but just feeling like my hands are tied, holding space for that not running from it, and then bringing myself back up. Hmm. I'm going to come to hands and knees.
feel like I really want to twist my spine out. Twists really help us go with that flow, feeling that constant change. Rooting in one arm and twisting. Breath. And release and twist. I don't feel like being really aggressive or hot with myself today. Holding that mournful space. And then bring that arm down. Talking the toes, lifting the hips and letting my head go. Ah. Breath in the nose. Breath out the nose. Letting go of what I feel like my physical practice should look like. Especially if we're of the sort that we feel like we need to be doing 20 sun salutations. We need to be going hard. Remember that tapas or that discipline means holding and staying. Staying in a space of restraint. God, I'm going to bring my right knee down. Root that right hand down. Lengthen that left leg back. And then I'm going to root and left and feel myself trying to find balance and rootedness. Maybe lifting up. Really feeling that rooted right arm of mine. Every quiver, I'm gonna squeeze the muscles there and let them go. Squeeze and let it go. Maybe play with a little bit of balance. Checking in on how I am with the constant flow of life. This has already changed so much. Ah, oh, what am I carrying in my neck, my heart? Maybe bend that left knee, maybe not. Remember everybody, maybe also means maybe not. Let's see about finding that left foot or ankle. What does your wisdom tell you? You've got nothing to prove here. Just home and feeling. Remember we're connecting with a sensory experience, our emotional experience, and is our spirit free? That spiritual experience. And release. And then I'll bring ourselves back down. I'm going to come up to standing on my knees and work out my wrist because I feel all of that pressure that I had put in that wrist. I'm going to rotate those around. Oh. And then a camel pose, giving ourselves a little bit of support, hips forward, offering to bear my heart. Oh, let all of those feelings come and go. Where am I harboring and hosting space for emotions? Am I letting them go or am I holding on to them? Let them flow freely. I don't have to hold on to my space of sorrow. And nor do I get to hold on and cling to the space of joy. Let them flow freely and intermingle. That interconnectedness. And then come on back down. One more down dog. I'm feeling like really lengthening. Feeling my breath in. Use the exhale to lift my hips up and back, downward facing dog. Oh, maybe turning my head left and right. Am I listening? Am I speaking too much? I've definitely been speaking way too much. Oh. Embrace the silence in the room. Embrace hearing our breath. Knowing that that is the truth of this moment. And I'll bring the left knee down. 
stacking my left wrist under my left shoulder, aligning myself, back foot flat, feeling my hips and already feeling myself on this plane, right? I've turned my plane sideways. And then feeling this side. So this side is saying, oh, wait a minute, Belinda. Not ready yet if I'm gonna lift that back leg. And do I have a plan? Do I have an expectation? Can I just be present with what's right here? What's joyous right here? What's stable right here? What's unsure right here? What am I like in those unsure spaces? Can I go within? Maybe lifting that back leg. Maybe we're reaching upward, and I don't want this side to be the other side. I don't want this side to copy or mimic anything else. And I want to feel that lifted leg. I want to feel my groin and my core doing all of these little stutters to hold me up. And say, this is my steadiness right here, right now. I'm not going to wish for more steadiness. This is what I got. This is what life is offering me, and I'm grateful. Now bend, find that foot maybe, laugh if we wobble, laugh if we fall, ask your kids to come and join. Breath, not in a competition, not trying to outdo anybody. This is my spirit occupying this shape in this body right now. And I breathe in and breathe out and that breath is gone. That moment is gone. So what am I soaking up in this minute, this moment, this breath? Releasing and then bringing that hand back down, coming up to standing on my knees, working out my wrists, ah, feeling the pressure um, relieving that pressure, maybe working the wrists here. One more camel. If you want to join, you don't have to. A little bit of space in between the knees. Hmm, support on the low back or maybe the hands rest on the hamstring. Feel this space at the hips allowing upward opening and lifting. How much space can we allow, even if it's a millimeter? And if everything in you is saying, no, I can't allow that, go to child's pose. Honor what your body and your spirit say, no, that's too open. No, I, I, I'm not solid enough for that right now. I need more consoling. And child's pose. Ah, are we able to listen? What is our body willing to give us? Do we respect it? Or are we pushing ourselves into a should space? Breath in as we come up, tuck the toes, lift the hips down, dog, if you're ready. Ah, I've already told you all, I really feel the need for a lot of spaciousness, so I want to lift my back leg and point the toe and open the hip and stretch that out, letting my head sink down, feeling my arm still supporting me, feeling that I can change perspective, I can change my position in life, and then check in with my spirit and go, oh, okay, I'm all right. I'm still all right. I'm working on feeling good and being okay with feeling good when I know that so many others may not be feeling so good right now. And that's impermanent too. And we shift forward and we're gonna bring my knee to my chest. If you wanna bring that other leg down, go ahead. I know that building up that heat helps my body cleanse itself, clearing out those pipes, holding and breathing and feeling and then breathe in, drop the belt, head down, lift the hips, maybe stretch it open again. 
and then see if my knee wants to come toward that armpit. Breath. And then lift, drop the head down, lift the gaze, drop it, drop it, drop it, let the head go. And I'll bring that foot down, come down to the knees and find another camel. Lifting and bearing the heart up to the heavens, hands to the hamstrings, hips up. How often do we find our body in this shape? What perspective does it offer us? What energy do we get to clear, cleanse? Ah, oh, by not being so closed in. But do we feel safe? Are we meeting ourselves as the posture changes? The impermanence? Where is the depth of breath? And child's pose. Ah. Soften and release. When we compress the belly up against the legs, we get to let that stimulation kind of compress and squeeze out. Help your organs and your colon to eliminate. Purge and cleanse. Downward facing dog if you want. Now you can keep those legs down. Remember everyone, I'm just sharing the extent of my practice at home. At home, feeling the flesh around the bones of my arms, feeling my ribs, feeling my organs, checking in. It's a little checkup. Right? It's a little yogic checkup, checking up and in with the body. My mind, noticing where my mind has been putting all of its attention. Hi, ah, my spirit. Am I living, living the purpose of my spirit? I'm bringing the other leg up, pointing the toe, opening the hip. Ah, oh, I want to stretch that out. Now I can feel here that my right leg is oh, its not supporting me the way my left leg had. It's holding a lot of tension, so I'm not going to go so far. Listen to it. I'm doing a little bit of review, wondering what I did in imbalance over the last few days as to why that leg might be feeling something more. Also, the right side of our body is uh, the young side or the sending side, or as some might refer, the masculine side. So have I been delivering more than I've been allowing myself to receive? And then pulling that left knee into the chest, coming forward, hugging in my strength on this side, feeling my heat. And then lifting it back up. Hear your breath. Hear yourself more than me. And then elbow to, I'm sorry, knee to the armpit or the elbow. If we've told ourselves we're not strong, check in right here and learn just how strong you are. Yes, you are. And then lift. And I'm going to bring that foot down. Lightly bend both knees and walk my hands back to my feet and ragdoll here. Ha. Ah. Hear your lungs. Focus on nice cleansing. Big, open, voluminous lungs, healthy lungs. And bending the knees, pulling the butt back, lifting the chest, chair. Open space of strength. 
I pulled my knees into my chest and had a closed space of strength. And I get to sit and hold and feel. And try to invite some clear air and breathing in a space of holding strength. Noticing how much we've been holding in strength for ourselves, for others. Not going beyond what we can offer, reaching forward, laying the chest on the thighs. I'm going to bring my left elbow outside of my right knee, both palms together, and squeeze and twist. You could always use your block here, down, and bring your hand here and twist in this manner. So feel your way and breathe as we feel this fire. Reach, let it go. And another chair if you want. You could go straight to the twist. You could hold and hang out, forward fold. Maybe you've already spent more energy than you want it or that, that you feel like you can sustain with calm and ease. We're generating calm and ease. Lengthening and then maybe grabbing that block, elbow outside a knee, finding that twist. Maybe just your hand comes down to your block. Feel your fire, feel the struggle. Ask for no struggle. That means you gotta sit up a little higher, sit up a little higher. We don't need to add to our struggles. Breath. Reaching. Forward fold, big breath. Fold within. Cleanse and purify. And then we can bring a block or a book out in front of us. Maybe separate the feet a few inches apart. Rooting into one arm. Actually, let's find a supported, I want to find a supported uh, warrior three. Noticing the distraction of my mind with the mat. Fascinating distractions, offering me a chance to practice. And that's impermanent, let that go. Meet myself right where I am. And lifting my right leg up and back. And twisting that hip open. Nice, free, and open space. Now you can stay here. We're asking a lot of ourselves. Maybe that left hand comes to the block or the floor. And the right hand, ha ha. The right hand could come to the hip. And then you can readjust, reset, giving ourselves another chance, all of that impermanence, all of that impermanence. Breath. And then we'll bring that leg down, bring both hands down, forward fold. Half moon. Coming on back, finding that block, finding our supported warrior three. My distracted mind returned. Pulling that chest forward. Feeling stable in the legs before I lift that left leg up. 
already noticing, yeah, I didn't really check on that stability there. I was a bit in a rush. Trying to come back now into my practice, not a practice on display. And twisting that hip open. Already feeling a bit of a difference here in my relationship with standing and balancing. And the support. I think I have more confidence that my right leg has me. Breath. Breathing with ease. Love the wobbles. I'm feeling the muscles in my shins and my ankles doing a lot of work. Working too hard to be in the ground. I just tried to soften that space a little. And then both hands down, both legs down, breath in, lift and let it go. I'm gonna move my blocks out of the way and come down onto the mat and lie down on my belly. and feel all the support of the earth. I can have compassion for others, but I also have to really hold this space for my energy. Where am I on the planet, right? I am not, you know, my friends and my loved ones situation. My situation is my situation, my life, how I'm walking on this journey. Own it and love it and give it all of the respect and honor that it requires, that it deserves. We'll find a sphinx here, lifting and offering and shining the heart up, chin tucked breath. Feeling so much support, right? We have so much surface of the body on the earth. Can I lift with that much support? I just lifted and opened with just the sole of my foot and one hand on a block. So what am I capable of when I have super duper grounding? What can I feel? What can I share? What can I give away? And lower it down. Turning my head to one side, deep breath. And turning my head to the other side. I'm going to bring my hand alongside my waist and get ready for a cobra or an up dog. I'm actually feeling like, oh, I'd like that expansive open, strong feeling space of that up dog. So I'm gonna test in, feel my feet pressing down, feel my legs, my body's a little warm from the work that we've done. And I'm gonna press through the arms, lift the hips, lift the heart, my chin down. And find the breath. What's still lengthening? What's still rooting? What do we energetically, spiritually need to lengthen or root? What's over trying? And tuck the toes, butt goes up, head goes down. Ah, feeling my low back. Spreading my toes. I'm going to go straight back into that up dog. And some of you may want to come into the cobra. 
shoulders down, what's still lifting. Even if it's not as high, what am I lifting? And where am I feeling it? And what am I letting go of? Inside, I'm letting my hips go to sink heavy and let the heart lift and breathe in that space as the hips sag down, pulling that spine. And lift the hips up and back down, dog. Maybe walking those heels up and down. And then bringing myself down to my hands and knees. I'm going to step my right foot up. And then some of you may wish to get your block here. And bring it down under that right hip. Going for a Hanumanasana. Alright, so you can have that block here. Maybe a cushion under your knee. Um, if you have knee issues, this may not be a comfortable space for you. So you could just sit with your legs out in front of you and do that forward fold, that Pachimo east-west stretch, that Pachimo Tanasana. If you want to find half, um, half Hanumanasana or half split, legs together, sitting with support under the hip and allowing that upper body to come forward. So I'm going to take this block away. Maybe using that right hand as a kickstand. Letting my tummy expand in and out with breath. Feeling the weight of the world on the back of my shoulders and letting it go. For this breath, in this moment, I don't have to carry that. It's all impermanent. We are not in charge. Bringing ourselves up, coming forward onto that left knee, stepping that right knee back, and getting ready to change it for the other side. Bringing that foot forward, maybe putting a block under your left butt, now, you can see a little more clearly on this side, I think. <laughs> um, you could have that foot under the butt and kind of sit on it. Some may be able to have that foot outside of the butt. More of a different space, a different posture, Triyanga Mukhai Padasana. Um, chest up, but that's up to you. Feel it out. Maybe you're on the block. This is your body, your practice. Feel what it wants to say to you. Whether it's saying yes or no, give me more. And then we'll come forward. Breath in. Breath out. When I feel tension in tight spaces in my body, I know that's an area where I am not going with the flow, where I'm clinging, and that's the opposite of impermanence. So I send that intention into those tight areas to go with this flow, to just breathe and let go. Let whatever it is go, even if I have to pick it up later. For now, accept the impermanence of this. And if it doesn't let it go, the thought to let it go is also impermanent. And I'll bring myself up. I'm just going to shift my weight over to that left hip. Maybe move that block out of the way if you have that block under you. And I'm going to step this foot across the right thigh. Right knee aiming up. I'm going to keep that left leg straight. Just want to feel this stretch to the side of this thigh. Feeling a little bit of crossing action, adducting in my hips. Instead of always having the hips needing to go that way, can I invite my hips to go this way? 
wrapping the arm around that knee. Some of you are able to back it up and bring that elbow outside of the knee for a bind, but don't let binding or clenching create tension. We're always looking for the free and easy space in this. Let's lift the chest, revolve. Where's the ease? And then really breathe and fill up the abdomen with breath cleansing, ventilating, sloughing, saucha. could probably sit in that twist for another minute or so and our time is going to run out so definitely for my own self time away from cameras I know that I, I need to probably go and do that a little bit longer I was just starting to feel a lot more ease in that I'm going to step this other foot across feel free to stay there though if that's where you are all right we're going to wrap the arm around Lifting through the heart, breath in, and revolve, revolve, revolve. From the lowest part of the spine, let that abdomen protrude, feeling the tummy pumping, moving, sloughing, cleansing. Let that fear go through, let that sorrow go through, let that resistance to the truth of what we're living go through. And then we'll gradually bring ourselves back up. Now what my home practice is asking of me right now may not be accessible. So you guys know that I really like to make things as accessible as possible. So you could find crisscross applesauce or you could do a single pigeon if that's a space for you that, that you're familiar with, all right? But I'm gonna do a double pigeon. A little bit out of time, I guess. And um, I'm feeling like, yeah, d doing both at the same time is just, I really want to be in my hips and in my piriformis all at the same time here. So I'm going to bring this ankle above this knee and have shin stacked above shin, knee over ankle, ankle over knee. Oh, and lift my body weight up and off of my hips and just feel for here. Thinking of an open space, letting my hips breathe. And twisting, twisting is so cleansing, so purifying. Feeling the fascia beneath the skin, but above the muscles. It's like a muscle clenching around our muscles. And can we ask that fascia to soften and allow this movement and let movement, move energy, clear energy, clear the gunk. Movement cleanses. And we'll gently release and find the other side. A few pelvic tilts here. Really wakes up what's going on in my hips, what feels frozen, what emotions I need to acknowledge. I've got to cleanse out my emotional pipes as well. And then I'll release and come on forward. Let go. 
let go of what I want out of this practice, let go of what I want out of this day, and accept what's here, accept what's in these hips, what's in my body right now, what it wants to give me, accept what it needs to express, and it really needs to express a little bit more vulnerability. Right, and expressing vulnerability, Whoa, right? The vulnerability that we need to express vulnerability, whoa, that's like tough shit, right? That's really, really hard stuff. And there's no perfect way to do it. Vulnerable isn't pretty. Rarely is it, bruh. And then we'll bring ourselves up and see about the other side. I'm gonna scooch up here for a second because it looks like Claudia said something. Oh, Carmen. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna find the other side. Stacking, honor and love. I know lots of us are looking like this if we're trying this double pigeon. Remember, ease and steadiness. So if this it doesn't bring us ease, go ahead and do a single pigeon or sit crisscross applesauce. Ask yourself, why am I trying to force myself into a space? You know, oftentimes we can catch ourselves. Our yoga shows us when we're smashing that square peg in the round hole and we're going, why doesn't it fit? Why won't it go? Why won't? Why? 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 And we go, oh, duh, it doesn't fit. Yoga should fit us. It isn't just fitness, right? Yoga needs to fit us. All right, let's sit on up. A little bit of a twist. Breathing in that nose, cleansing, purifying, using those nostril hairs. And release, coming around to the other side. Breath in, breath out. And then I'll come away from that space and allow my upper body to come forward. Embrace and hug within. Hug into the intensity of what I'm feeling. Soften around the intensity of what I'm feeling. This too shall pass. We can bring ourselves back up. All right. Make yourselves comfortable. You could lie down for Shavasana. You could find a seated space for meditation. Consider Shavasana a lying down meditation. And our seated space is just another way, another space for us to find that coming within dharana and dhyana focus and meditation two other branches of yoga aspects that we are binding together that we are pulling together, dharana and dhyana, focus and meditation. So if you're lying down, bring the body to a space of ease, adjust your hips, your shoulders. Relax. 
for sitting. Find a space of comfort, maybe support for your spine. Your eyes could be open or lightly closed. Bring that inward gaze into your physical body and notice any sensation, tingling, vibration beneath the surface of your skin, your energy, your prana. That vibrant energy of life, where can we feel it? What is the amplitude of what we're feeling? And follow the rhythm of your breath, which also means prana, the energy of life through breath. The breath is coming in and the process is happening and that is in the now and the breath is going out and the process is happening and that is going out and it's fluid. Fluidity is unto itself impermanent. Its state, its flow. If the flow stops, it is stagnant and that isn't change. As long as we have life, we are constantly changing. Being is not static. Feel your being, the amplitude of your being. Being is becoming, constantly becoming. When the mind wanders, bring it back to this breath, in this body, in this room. Be aware of taste and smell, sound, sight. Eventually join together in a seated space to close our community home practicing together. And check in with that physical body, that breath body that mental and then that spiritual body. I want to feel that sense of touch and for any of us who are living solitary, thank goodness I have quadrupeds that I can have that touch with, but that we're missing this element, that connection of physical touch with one another. So I've got to feel it, feel the warmth of my own skin touching my own skin. A single ohm feeling the vibration of spirit and life flowing through me. Breath in. to the heart center, Anjali Mudra. Mm, all that is love and kindness in me is deeply grateful for all of the love and kindness in you. Let's hold space with love and kindness 
for us all. Don't hold it back. Don't restrict yourselves from loving someone else for their beliefs, for any perceived harm or slight. We've got to share it. We've got to give it away freely in order for us to feel that love and feel that wholeness. Thank you all for letting me uh, share my practice with you. Saucha, purity and cleansing. Maybe practice it in what you're ingesting. Check in throughout the day. Check in on your breath practices throughout your day. Get some clean air in your breath and your lungs. Do your practice another time today. It can be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, all right? I don't sit and count the minutes or the hours, all right? But throughout the day, I'm stopping. When my body says, hey, we need some attention. When my breath says, hey, you need some attention. When my mind is going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, ah, we need some attention. Namaste. Be well.